Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're inside of Sequoia Pro 17 and we are looking at instrument VSTs. Sequoia has an interesting way of working with instrument VSTs because it sees them as their own objects. They do not need to be attached to a track, kind of like a real synthesizer. You don't need to take the audio outputs and plug them into a mixer. They could exist on their own, you just won't hear it. <laughs> and you could set up MIDI signals completely separate from this. Sequoia works in that way, making it have some behaviors you may not be used to. So let's take a look at just some of the things you can do with it. Hopefully you'll avoid some of these stumbling blocks I had when I was getting started. So first off, I have here a new session and we've got a single track and let's load a VST on there. So we're gonna come over to the plugin and you, if you click directly on the label, you get this plugin browser. And I'm gonna go over to the first one here. So it loads up and if I play, it will automatically arm the monitoring and two things have happened. First, the audio has been assigned to this track. And in Sequoia, there is no real difference between an audio and a MIDI track. You can think of it as like the default track type is an instrument track from other DAWs. So if you don't have any instrument VSTs active on a track, then it must be an audio track. If you do, then it must be a MIDI track. And that's kind of how Sequoia looks at things. So this tells it that, hey, we've connected the synth to this track, so it, it should use this as the output. And then we have a MIDI assignment here. Now, if you don't have this, this track head, you can hit tab while you have this area selected and it will, it'll come up. And if you're missing the track editor, that's what this is up here, this little uh, mixer icon. In the track editor, you can see the MIDI tab, which is pretty handy, and you can also see your plugins. So, okay, things are pretty straightforward right now. Uh, we have assigned a audio, so our audio goes here. We have a MIDI assignment as well, and this is when I hit keys, this is how it knows to go to this VST. And if we look here, we also have our track assignment here. There is one other menu I want you to be aware of that can answer a lot of questions. And that is the plugin manager uh, for instrument plugins. So if you hit Control Shift I, or if you go to View, go to Manager, and then go to the VST Instrument Manager. You pull this up, and here we can see our instrument is loaded up. And this can often answer questions. You might be going, what the heck's happening? So we have here an output routing. This is the audio assignment that has happened. This, and then we have our MIDI track in the MIDI channel that sits on. So just keep in mind that these things are in here and they can lead to some powerful options when it comes to routing things around. All right, so this is pretty straightforward so far. Nothing surprising. Things can get weird though, as soon as you try to add a second instrument or as soon as you start duplicating things, uh, which is something I do a lot when I'm working. So let's add a second instrument first and see how that goes. So I'm going to click. So before I clicked here and got the browser, I'm gonna do it the longer way just to show you. You can click the drop down and it's, it's the second option. So in here, I am going to load another one of these instruments. In fact, let's actually load a different instrument just so uh, there's there. So first, now we're presented with this menu. Like, what's the deal with this menu? Why is this showing up? Uh, so it says, keep the VST instrument. Do you want to keep this? And let's say we, our intention was to create a layer. Well, you can't actually do it this way. And so if we delete it, it's going to delete this instrument and then assign the one we just picked. If you choose to keep it, it is going to just unassign it to this track and you'll see the output routing will disappear and it will assign the new instrument we picked to this track. So let's say we wanna keep it. It's gonna load up. So there it is, there's our track, this is our sound. Wow, that's chunky. And you can see it's now gone and Revolta 2 is here. And if we look down here in the instrument manager, the output routing is now missing. So this DNE1, it exists inside of Sequoia, but it is not attached 
to anything. The MIDI's not routed and the uh, audio is not routed. And this for me was very confusing because it's like, where did it go? And the only way to get it back, like let's say, oh, I wanna go back. Uh, you know, I tried this sound and I like the other sound more. I, I wanna go back to the old one. Well, to do that, you could change it here. So when you click this drop down, you can see a list of all of the ones that are loaded. And you can see here, this one's got the assignment to track one. This one's not been assigned to anything. And so you would think if you click this, it, it should be hunky dory because, you know, we're going to assign this one to the track. So we click that one. It's going to again ask, should we delete the other one? Most of the time, right? Why would you want to keep it around? Well, maybe we want to flip flop between sounds. Maybe uh, we worked hard on that patch and we still want to save it. And so we don't want to delete it quite yet. So we'll, we'll hit keep. But if you delete, it's, it's pretty much an on issue now because now it just doesn't exist. So we'll hit keep. But now look at this. Now there is no output routing. It does not, it just did the MIDI because that's what we clicked on the MIDI. The output routing is missing. So now if I play notes, we have nothing. So if we come down to the output routing, we still need to pick it to use this because you might go up to this menu. This threw me forever. Uh, I was up here trying to find a way to find the plugins that are currently loaded as objects so I can just pick the one I want to use. Uh, no such menu, I looked for it for a long time, but no such menu exists as far as I know other than the VST Instrument Manager. So in here, we could say, hey, you know, we want this to go to track one. And now it shows up. And then now we're connected back. So that was a big thing for me trying to understand this. This leads to something interesting though. We have two instruments. Could I assign this to the same track? The answer is yes, but we are only triggering off this input. So the MIDI is only going to this one and you cannot, it gets, it gets really buggy if you try to put more of these. You cannot have more than one track assignment in that way. So it's fine with this. You can have them both come out of here, but we, all, we are only hearing this. And you can see the little plus sign now has appeared. If we take this off, it goes away. So that lets you know that there's more than one thing here. So let's say, hey, I do want to activate this other one, but I want it to still come out of track one for some unknown reason. So I'm going to double click down here to add a track and I'm going to choose to use Revolta 2. So you see this one's on track one. So we'll go Revolta 2. So now this is going to trigger off it, but it is going to be coming out of this top track. And we can hear both of them now. I'm sorry I didn't pick the greatest sound there, but um, it is now coming out both. So hopefully this routing makes some sense. It took me a little bit to get my head around how Sequoia likes to do things. And this is how it likes to do things. And so just be aware of that. Now let's now let me show you the other thing. So that's dealing with multiple VSTs. You could of course um, load it. We could of course change this to be on track two, which, which is in this case is called MIDI, and it would make far more sense. This is just a name, by the way. It's it's got no significance. If you were to load an audio track and a MIDI track, they're they're basically identical. Let's say that we want to duplicate this track. So if we come over to track one. Uh, and let's say we want to duplicate this track because maybe we like it. We want to maybe change the patch a little bit to make a layer or maybe we just want to have an alternate part we want to screw with. There are a whole bunch of reasons why I might want to do this. So we're going to duplicate tracks. You have some options. So in general, you're going to want to have everything copied over. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And we want to insert a new track and uh, depending on your setup, you may want this on, but the importantly, you want to create new instances of the VST. If you do not do this, it will lead to some things that, as far as I know, I don't know how to undo. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to click this off and hit OK. So now we have a track up top that loads a VST and this one down here that has it. Now, if we look, we can see this is the first instance of DNE1. This is not a unique instance. If we go to the drop down in the MIDI, 
There is only one of these and it's assigned to track one. So this means that if we make changes to this version, like we change the volume or something, maybe we reduce it. Um, we are also making changes to this version. If we bypass it, that one gets bypassed. They are connected. And that is a sub significant thing. So you might say, well, I want to make this one unique or different. Well, I actually am not quite sure at the moment how to do that. Um, but what you could try doing, I don't know if there's an option down here to duplicate it or I, I couldn't figure it out. So if someone in the comments wants to let me know, um, I, would, I would be interested to know. We can also see now in the instrument manager how things have been updated. Now this is a multi out because it is coming out of this track in this track. So you need to be aware of that. Maybe we don't want that behavior, but because of the way we duplicated it, this is how it is. And I am currently unaware of a way to make this a unique version so that we can change this independently. The only way I know of how is to just delete it and make a new one. But this is where the new weird thing comes in. It stacks, it can get really crazy. So if you go, I wanna remove this so I can have my own, you might say, I'm gonna remove this plugin. You click it. It removes the MIDI assignment, but the plugin's still there and assigned as an output because it, when you say remove it, it's like, all right, we just won't send to that thing anymore. But it still comes out of here. It doesn't actually remove it audio wise. And this is uh, just a really confusing thing. How do you get rid of it? Well, you'd have to come to the multi out and actually tell it, don't send it to this thing anymore. Send it to the first one. And that's how you would do it. The next thing you might try is, okay, maybe you want to duplicate it, but you want to, instead you try copy paste. Well, with instruments, this works for effect plugins, but for instruments, if you do copy, and then we come over here and try to paste, it is grayed out. You cannot do that. So the only way to duplicate, uh, and this was something that once I understood this, this has made life quite a bit easier, is you need to come to the drop down. Uh, I want duplicate tracks, please. And we want to force the creation of new VST instrument instances. And what this will do is now it is a, you see how this is one and this is two. This completely avoids all those issues, all that weird stuff. Copy and paste doesn't work with instruments. So be aware and removing causes audio outputs to be kind of strange. And so this is how you want to do it. Also, I had noticed down here our option didn't uh, update here. You see how we only have one? Where's our second one? Maybe we leave, come back. There it is. So sometimes you need to leave and come back for screens to refresh. This is also true. I've seen this happen on the names. If you update a name, if you update something, the track labels may not update until you refresh the user interface for that thing. And then, it, then it'll update. But anyways, this is, hopefully this solves issues if you've been having issues with instruments. This is how instruments work in Sequoia. So that's instruments inside of Sequoia. It's one of those things that can be a little technical, but once you know how things are connected, it's usually pretty easy to get things behaving the way you want. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I know I had a lot of questions when I was figuring this out. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.